All right, welcome back. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the KPI indicator, which is a great way to visualize key performance indicators that you might have. It's going to allow you to do things like compare actual and target values against each other. And then you even have an option where you can show the deviation between the two as a percentage or as a hard, hard number inside the visual. Uh, now, the nice thing about this is it also allows you to show, in addition to the KPI value, a chart, whether it's a line chart or a bar chart in here. And it's really interesting. I think you guys will enjoy this one. You can see who it's published by here as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the KPI indicator with the status of history here. I think you guys will really enjoy this one. Let's take a look. All right, now, so as we get into this one, we're going to go ahead and start by importing some data. And I have brought in some KPI appropriate data here. So I'm going to go up to the Get Data section of my Power BI desktop application. And I'll select Get Data. We're going to be pulling in some data from Excel today. So I'll select Excel. And again, you can find the data source we're using for this video at the bottom of the post here. Uh, the one that we're going to be using today is sales actual versus target. So I'm going to select that data set, that data file, and I'll select open. Now, as we go to navigate and pull this data in, we're going to pull in the sales quota data. So we're going to be looking at data that shows by month the sales actual versus the sales target. So what are we trying to reach to and what do we actually make? And we're seeing this by month. So I'll go ahead and select the sales quota data and hit load to bring this into our data model immediately. No need to edit it. The data is in good shape already. So I'll go ahead and bring it in as is. Now, what I'd like to do in this video is show you a brief comparison between the KPI indicator that's already available to you by default inside of the Power BI desktop. You can see the KPI right here. And then I'll compare that to the custom visual that we're going to look at here in just a moment. Now, of course, the th first thing you'll need to do is to go ahead and download that custom visual, which you'll find by going to visuals.powerbi.com. That'll give you the list of all of the custom visuals that you see here. And as you scroll down towards the bottom, you'll see the KPI indicator, which you can download. And you can download the visual here. You can also download some samples as well. So once you have that downloaded, you can go ahead and go back over to the Power BI desktop. And from the Power BI desktop, we can do that comparison against the traditional KPI that's already built in versus the one we're going to have to import, which is a custom visual. So I'm going to go ahead and first start by using the native KPI indicator here. So I'll select KPI. And then I'll go ahead and bring in a few items here that we want to look at. Let's say we want to look at the actual and maybe uh, the month. I want to look at the actuals by month. And let's also bring in the target as a comparison here. And so we're able to see very clearly here a KPI indicator that shows us whether or not we met our goal, which in this case we did not meet our goal. And it shows us what percentage we did not meet our goal by. Okay. Now, the other thing to be aware of when you use this data is that you are looking at some interesting data here that you might need to adjust. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I were to actually bring this data in as a table for just a brief moment, I'm going to bring in a table of data here that shows the month and the actual and the target. And I'll bring this over here and increase the size of that table just a little bit so you can see what the data looks like. We'll then talk about what, what we're seeing here is a major problem with the data, which is that the sort order of the data is sorting by the month name and not the month number. So what we need to do is I do have inside of the data file itself a month sorting column. It's called month number. There's also a fiscal, fiscal month column, which I could choose to, to sort by if I, chose, well, if I decided to. Uh, in this case, what I'd like to do is I'm going to select the month column here in my data set, in my field list. And then I'll go up to the top ribbon, the modeling ribbon here. So go up to the modeling ribbon. And I can tell it how do I actually want to sort this data. You'll see here there's a sort by property that if I select that, I can choose that I actually want to sort this data by either a fiscal month or a month number. In this case, I'll do it by the month number, which is just numbers 1 through 12. And then you can see that it immediately changed both, both my KPI and my table to have the data sorted appropriately here. All right, so what we're looking at here so far is just data shown as a table and as the standard KPI. The next step is I want to show you how you can import the custom KPI indicator and show you how to use that one. So to import the custom KPI indicator, you'll hit the ellipses here in the visualization pane to import from a file the new custom visual. It'll prompt you here. You can, by the way, you can always uncheck this if you don't want to see this custom visuals warning every time. And I'll hit import. And then I'll go find the location where I have downloaded that custom visual that I showed you on the website earlier. The name of that custom visual is going to be called KPI status with history. So I'll go ahead and select that indicator or that uh, visual. And once that's imported, you can see it appear here on the uh, part of my visualizations pane. So I'm going to go ahead and select that new custom visual, and I'll resize it so it's about the same size as the one above it. Maybe I'll resize them both to be a little bit larger so we can compare them. And then I'll select the new one that we just imported and start to bring in some data into it. So uh, like we did in the last example, I'll bring in the 
uh, the actual, the month, and the target value here. Okay, and you can see the difference between the two different indicators, the visualization here where it shows the line in the background of the regular KPI indicator and the line in the uh, bottom of the new KPI indicator uh, do show a similar pattern. So you're seeing that the data does represent about roughly the same it does in the bottom as it does in the top. You're also seeing the numbers represent about the same as well. There's some rounding that's occurring here in the, the new indicator. But it's a nice little indicator and it's, it has nice bold colors to it and it's very interesting here to see the differences in the one that's in here by default versus the one that you can add in yourself. The nice thing is that the custom one that we've imported has a few other things that you can do to uh, change how it visualizes the data. And so let's look at some of that formatting that you have the ability to do. If I want to adjust the formatting, I can select the KPI indicator here and then go over to the, the paintbrush, which is the formatting section of the visual, and I'll go ahead and select that paintbrush. Once you do that, you'll see most of these settings are ones that you've seen in the past. They're in really every one of the visuals, except for the one on the bottom. And we've talked about many of these other ones, like changing the background color, uh, giving it a title, uh, giving it some uh, aspect, lock the la aspect ratio, so that way when I resize it, it stays the same size. There's things like that you can do. You can add a border to it if you want, just adds a box around it. But really the key one to this visual is the KPI section here on the bottom. And I'll make this a little larger so we can really see what all these things say here. All right, so what you have in here is you have the ability now to tell it what do you want to actually name it? Because right now, by default, it names it actual, which is just the name that comes through the first uh, measure that I selected. But what I'd like to do instead of just naming it actual is let's name it something different. You can change the name of the KPI here, and I can call this actual verse target if I want. And as I rename it, you'll see it also shows up in the chart as a renamed value here as well. You can also do some things like changing the banding options. You can change the banding type. So for example, if you're dealing with budget data, and the more value, the higher the value is, or the higher the value is over the, the, the goal or the budget, that's usually a bad thing. So you might want to say, well, it's better if I'm under budget. So you could say decreasing is, is the better. In my case, I'm looking at sales target data. So really, I want to beat my target. So increasing is better. So there's, there are some cases where you might want to change this from increasing is better, which is the default, to decreasing is better. In some cases, you'll also want to say closer is better, meaning closer to the goal or closer to the target is best. Things like, uh, think about healthcare data. If you're looking at uh, your blood pressure, you don't want to have too high of a blood pressure or too low of a blood pressure. So closer is often better in some situations like that. So keep those in mind. You can come into to the formatting section here again just to point out some other things you can do. You can change the chart type. Right now you can see this is in here as a line, but if I would like to see this as a bar chart instead, I can change this to a bar, and it visualizes that as a bar here. So you do have some other options that are really nice as, way, as far as how you can customize and change this visual that are built into the custom visual once you download it. So I kind of like the bar chart. I think the bar chart's a nice way to visualize this. I'll keep that as my option here. And then I want to show you one other way that you can visualize this data here as well. And that is we're going to bring in another KPI indicator. So I'll select KPI indicator again, and I'll make this one a little larger. And rather than really using this as a traditional KPI or as an indicator visualization, I really just want to show a line chart here. I really just want to show some trending in data. And this is a great way to do it because it allows you to show a number and then a line right below it if you'd like. So what I can do to make this work is I can select the actual value here and I can select the month value. And then just like that, we're able to see a nice trend chart that shows us the data across time. And I didn't even have to make it and use it as an indicator or a KPI visual if I wanted to. I can just use it as a pure way to show a number and a line chart or a bar chart. Remember, you can change this to a bar chart by simply going under the formatting section and changing it from the chart type of a line to a bar, and then you've very easily there changed it. I'm going to leave it as a line just so you can have the, the, the difference there between the two indicators next to each other. So this was a quick video that shows you how to use the KPI indicator. It has a great visualization where you can see both line or bar charts below the KPI value. It also allows you to see things like the the deviation between the two. By the way, you can even bring in other things in here. Say, for example, I wanted to actually look at this and filter this by a certain value. I could bring in a slicer, and within the slicer, I could do things like, say, I want to filter just by June or maybe multiple months. I could select the months that I want to show here. And you can see as you use the filters like slicers or if you click on bars and bar charts, all of those apply with inside the visuals in the KPI indicator as well. Hope you enjoyed this one. Look forward to showing you our next custom visual.